Well, I sure hope your lab doesn't sound that loud. <laughs> if it does, let's fix it. Now, in a studio such as this, we can't have any noise. So a rack being located in a studio has to be as quiet as it possibly can. We can't have any noise. So what do we have to do? First of all, we try to get equipment that don't make a lot of noise, but sometimes that's impossible. Fortunately, a lot of equipment today, because it's more efficient, it has better fans in it that have ball bearings, things like that, and it's just not as noisy as it used to be. Boy, back in the day, you had to put all of equipment like this in another room. You couldn't even really keep it inside the studio because it just made too much noise. Nowadays, things are a lot quieter. And with acoustics in the room in here, when you put the dampening type material on the wall, um, sound dampening, it, it helps a whole lot. There's none of that uh, reflection that's coming from the wall and bouncing back at you with noise from the back of the rack. We just don't have that problem. Let's look in a little bit closer to this rack and see what we've done here. Okay, as we look a little bit closer, let me just name a couple of things, a couple of items here, data items especially. This rack consists of data and audio, so it's a mix of both. A couple of transmitting items in here as well. None of the equipment in this whole rack really make a lot of noise. It just doesn't. It's just a lot more quieter than things used to be. Boy, those, those old data switches used to be just roaring. They were just making a lot of noise. The uh, unified switches and they just it's pretty quiet that's one thing that's in our favor but as we look a little bit closer to the rack here it's it's not an open data rack that you would normally see for a data room it's 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 got sides on it so it's closed in what that does especially in a studio setting right here where we just can't have all that noise it channels any noise that it does make to the back corner of the room which is filled with this carpet that's uh, spray glued on the wall. Probably the cheapest carpet you can find at any big box store, any uh, home improvement store, Lowe's, Home Depot. And it's that thin carpet and you, you just do your spray glue on it, shh, spray it on the wall, shh, let it dry and then stick it and make sure you're, it's like hanging wallpaper, really it is. And um, it works very well. It dampens the room a whole lot. So. You want an inexpensive way to kind of quiet a room, get this carpet here. It works really good. I know a lot of you have done some high dollar things, but in radio, I've been in radio all my life, and let me tell you, stuff like that is used all the time. You could go buy the expensive stuff if you want, but you really don't have to. You can get the thin carpet, and it works really well. But it, it channels, anyway, all the noise in the cabinet channels to the corner, and the corner has, you know, the carpet in it. It's like this. You got, you know, sound is going like that. It just absorbs it. It doesn't, doesn't bounce back and starts reflecting all over the room. So I can't hear anything in this rack right now. All right, this may be more in line with what you have in your home lab. You might have it tucked away in a nice closet. Those always work really well because whatever noise is in the closet, if you have it properly vented with an air conditioning duct or uh, good circulation, then you're good. This particular rack right here makes uh, a little bit of noise. And uh, yeah, so this wouldn't be good if this was out in the room and you needed it to be real quiet. But to dampen something like this, obviously it's in a closet, so you just close the door and you don't hear it. But if you didn't have the door, let's just say this was kind of just in a, a corner of a room or something like that, you could do the carpet treatment we just talked about. That works really well. But this rack right here is not like the rack we just saw. This is an open data rack. So whatever noise is there, it's just gonna, <laughs> yeah, it's just gonna scream out all sides and you know, you're not gonna get uh, much sound dampening out of that. So some treatment would be great in a room like this in a closet if you wanted to. Uh, but uh, other than that, it's not gonna be a whole lot you can do with a closet. Close the door, you'll be good. Now, not all noises are created equally. Let's go to the whiteboard, let's figure this out. Okay, let's talk some noise, okay? There's several layers of noise, I guess you could say, layers, I don't know. Anyway, there's different words, there's different meaning to all the noises that we hear. The most common is white noise. White noise is 
basically all of the frequencies. So you got your high end and you got your low end and all of the frequency range in between that. It's all the frequencies combined. That is white noise. And a lot of people think that maybe a fan, a box fan or something like that is gonna be your white noise. But uh, I wouldn't put a box fan in the category of white noise. I guess you could, you know, some, some fans have a different pitch, different sound, so it, it could be, so we'll, we'll, we'll give it to them. Uh, but white noise is the, the number one because it's the one we always associate all noises with. Um, but white noise, if you want to put something with it, probably more in line of what white noise is, you remember the days the TV station would go off the air and it'd be a snowy picture? And, you know, uh, your daddy or your granddaddy probably fell asleep in a chair to that. That would be white noise. Some people find that pleasing to hear all of the frequencies. Some, maybe not so much. The next one's gonna be your pink noise. What is pink noise? We hear that too, you know? Uh, in fact, most of my life I've heard of white and pink noise and they're probably, I would say, pretty, pretty similar. Uh, pink noise is just white noise with a little bit of bass added to it. So if you put a little bass to it, it's a little bit more pleasing to the ear. Most people uh, tend to like that. So uh, pink noise is going to be your number two. We'll call that number two, okay? The next one's going to be your brown noise. And some of you may have never heard brown noise before, but brown noise is basically pink noise with a little bit more bass to it. <laughs> it's, it's, it's bass boosted pink noise. So if you like a lot of bass, then you might like brown noise. Now the next one's gonna be blue noise. Blue noise is gonna be the opposite of pink. Pink has the bass, right? Uh, blue is gonna be the opposite. It's gonna have a lot of treble in it. Bass and treble. So these are gonna be kind of opposite of each other. Okay, they're gonna be totally, totally opposite of each other. Nobody likes that. Not gonna to sleep too well with blue noise, okay? <laughs> yeah, the next one is gray noise. What in the world is gray noise? You might be asking about now. Gray noise is not really common. Uh, gray noise, I would say, is used more in the medical industry to treat uh, uh, hearing problems. Maybe tinnitus, uh, many of those ear problems that people have, different frequencies, and it's really used in the, in, in, in the medical industry with, uh, with uh, medical equipment, things like that, certain frequencies. So we don't hear much about gray noise. Now the final one, I'm sure you haven't heard either, but it actually has a purpose. Uh, it's called black noise. What is black noise? Well, that's pretty much what, you know, the color black is, and our darkness, right? That would be, that would be black. Well, in audio, black noise is what it says. It's just silence. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. I'd love to read your comments below on maybe what you're doing in your home lab. White noise consists of uh, all the frequencies. <laughs> That's a blooper.